Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to look at systems of linear equations in two variables and we're going to use the graphical and substitution method. So in this video we're going to look at how do you know if an ordered pair is a solution to a linear system or not? How do you solve linear systems using the substitution method? And then in the next video we'll look at how to solve linear systems using the addition or elimination method. How to identify systems that have not just one ordered pair as a solution. And then we'll also solve problems, application problems, using systems of linear equations. So in this first video, we're going to look at how do you solve a system of linear equations where you have two variables, and we're going to use the graphical or substitution method. The next video, we'll look at the addition method and any application problems. So let's review a little bit from earlier in the course. All equations of this form, ax plus by equals c, the graphs are straight lines, as we've seen earlier. So the variables are x and y. The a, b, and c are real numbers. Notice that x and y are being raised to the first power. And so this is a linear equation. If you have two equations in this form, then you have a system of linear equations, or sometimes people just call it a linear system. Now, one thing that we noticed previously in the course is that if you solve a linear equation, then you're going to have a set of ordered pairs, x comma y, that you can plot, and that will generate the graph. Well, a solution to a system of linear equations in two variables will not just be one x value, or one y value, it's an ordered pair. x comma y is a solution if it satisfies not just one equation, but both equations. So let's try an example out to see what this means. For example, the ordered pair negative three comma negative two, they're telling us it's a solution to the following system of equations. Because x equals negative 3, that's coming from the x-coordinate, and y equals negative 2 is coming from the y-coordinate. It says it satisfies these values with these equations. So let's try them out. To check to see if this is a solution or not to a system of equations, we need to substitute x equals negative 3 and y equals negative 2 into each equation and see if the point is actually a point on the line or not. So let's try out the first equation. Negative 2x subtract 3 times y equals 12. If you take x and replace with negative 3, make sure you, you substitute in in parentheses, and you replace the y with the negative 2, we're checking to see if this is equal to 12. The left side of the equation gives us 6 plus 6, and that is equal to 12. So this means the point, negative 3 comma negative 2, this ordered pair, is a point on the equation of the first line. So now let's try the second equation. 5x subtract 4y equals negative 7. Same idea, replace the x with a negative 3, and the y with a negative 2, and we're going to check, does this equal negative 7? The left side gives us negative 15 plus 8, and that is equal to negative 7. So this is a true statement for both the first equation and the second equation. That means, thus, negative 3 comma negative 2 is a solution to the system of equations. So that means that this point is on both lines, so it's a solution. So now let's talk about solution set. A solution set to a system of linear equations is the set of all these ordered pairs that are solutions to a system of linear equations. 
So you may have more than one solution. So if you have more than one, then that's called the solution set. It's the set of all solutions or set of order pairs that satisfies every equation in the system of equations. So you might have exactly one solution, no solution, or you might have infinitely many solutions. We're going to talk about those different types of cases in the next video. For the rest of this video, we're going to look at how to solve systems of linear equations where you have exactly one solution using both the graphical and substitution methods. Okay, let's try example one together. We're going to determine whether the following ordered pairs are solutions to a given system of linear equations in two variables. So let's try the first problem. The system of linear equations is x plus 3y equals 11. The second equation is x subtract 5y equals negative 13. And we're going to check whether the ordered pair 2 comma negative 3 is a solution or not. So let's try this out. Remember from the last page that we want to substitute x equals 2 and this time y equals negative 3 into each equation. And we're going to see if the equations are true statements or not. So let's try the first equation. 3y plus x equals 11. Replace x with 2. Replace the y with negative 3. And we're going to see, does this equal 11? Well, no. The left side gives us 2 subtract 9. That's negative 7. But we want this to equal 11, but it's not equal to 11. So this 2 comma negative 3 is not a point because it's on the first equation because it's not satisfying the first equation and making it true. So this ordered pair is not a solution to the system of linear equations. So keep in mind, if you have an ordered pair that's a solution, it needs to make both equations true. Let's try a different problem. Number two, this time let's try 2x plus 3y equals 17, and the other equation is x plus 4y equals 16. And let's try out the point, see if it's a solution or not, 2 comma 4. So again, substitute x equals 2 and y equals 4 into each equation. Okay, first equation, 2x plus 3y equals 17, replace the x with 2, and the y coordinate, let's replace it with 4, does this give us 17? The left side is equal to 4 plus 12, which is 16. We needed to get 17, so it's close, but it's still not equal to what we needed it to be. So. You don't need to check the second equation because 2 comma 4 is not a solution because it doesn't even satisfy the first equation to the system of equations. So we've had one example where the ordered pair is a solution. It, must, it satisfies both equations. And we've had a couple problems now where the point doesn't even satisfy one equation. So it cannot be a solution. All right, so it's nice that the point was given in this last example to check to see if it was a solution or not, but how do you actually find an ordered pair for a solution to a system of equations? Well, this first video, we're going to talk about two different methods. The first method is the graphical method. So a solution to a system of linear equations can sometimes be found if you use a graphing calculator or if you graph by hand both equations in the same rectangular coordinate system. So that means you graph the two equations in the same xy plane. The coordinates where the two lines intersect, the point of intersection, 
gives you the solution to a system of linear equations. And that point of intersection will, have it, will happen exactly once. So let's try out this graph. Notice that the first line falls from left to right. It's x plus 2y equals 2. The other line has an equation that's rising from left to right as x subtract 2y equals 6. And it looks like, just looking at the graph, they intersect at this point, the point of intersection. Four comma negative one. It looks like the x coordinate that they both have in common and the y value they both have in common are x equals four and y equals negative one. So this is a solution if it satisfies both equations. So let's try it out. So let's substitute x equals 4 and y equals negative 1 into the equation. Let's try out the first equation. So x is 4 when the y value is negative 1. And we're going to check, does this equal 2? Yeah, it does. 4 subtract 2 on the left side, and that's 2, so that's true. So let's try the second equation now x subtract 2y equals 6, substitute x equals 4 and y equals negative 1 into the equation. See if it's actually a true statement. So x is 4, subtract 2 times negative 1 for the y. Does this equal 6? 4 plus 2 does equal 6, so it's true. So 4 comma negative 1 is a point that's in common with the first line and the second line. So that's where the two lines will intersect each other. So that means that 4 comma negative 1 is a solution to the system of linear equations. Because it makes it's the only point that both lines will be true. Okay, well, that's nice if the x value and the y value are exactly whole numbers. But that might not be the case always. So the graphical method, we can use the graphing calculator to solve a system of linear equations. And that's what we're going to do next by finding the point of intersection of the two lines. So let's try example two. Solve the following system of linear equations in two variables using a graphing calculator to find the point of intersection. So let's try out 2x subtract 3y equals negative 4 and negative 2x subtract y equals negative 4. So one thing that I immediately notice with these two equations is that I cannot enter these into the graphing calculator, not unless I have y solved for. y must be isolated first. So solve each equation for y to obtain slope intercept form or y equals mx plus b. So the first equation, if you solve for y, you'll find out it's y equals 2 thirds x plus 4 thirds. So the slope is 2 thirds and the y-intercept is 4 thirds. The second equation, if you solve for y, you'll have negative 2x plus 4 equals y. So this equation has a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 4. So grab your calculators, go to y equals, enter in the first equation under y1, make sure the y was already solved for, so 2 thirds times x, plus 4 divided by 3, and then the y2 is the other equation, negative 2x plus 4. So we have entered in the functions, the two lines. Now, keep in mind, we want to find the intersection point, and it's very important the intersection point is on the screen of the graphing calculator. So the next step is to go to Window, and enter in these values for your window. x min should be negative 5, x max 5, you want to count the x tick marks by 1. The y values 
will start at negative 5, they'll end at positive 5, and the tick marks will count by 1 again for the y values. Once you have this window, then hit graph. So the first equation had a slope of 2 thirds, and the y-intercept was 4 thirds. The other equation has a slope of negative 2, and the y-intercept was 4. So notice that these two lines intersect each other, because one has a positive slope, one will have a negative slope. And it looks like, just looking at this graph, they might intersect when x equals 1, and the y value is equal to 2. So now we're on the graphing calculator. We're going to find out where do they intersect. So just go to second calc or second trace. Scroll down to number five, intersection. And the calculator is going to ask you some questions. What is your first curve? It should give you a blinking cursor on your first line, which was 2 thirds times x plus 4 thirds equals y. That's correct. So hit enter. Second curve is going to give you a blinking cursor on your second line which was y equals negative 2x plus 4. That's correct, so hit enter. And now the calculator wants you to guess. Guess at what x value does the graphs cross each other or intersect. It looks like we thought x equals 1. So type in x equals 1 or just 1. Hit enter. And the calculator will put a blinking cursor where the two lines intersect each other. x equals 1 and y equals 2. So that is the solution to this system of linear equations. So the intersection point was at 1 comma 2. And of course, this means that x equals 1 and y equals 2. This intersection point is the solution to the linear system or system of linear equations. So we solved the system of linear equations using the graphing calculator by finding the point of intersection. Now let's try out a method that does not involve the graphing calculator. We're going to use an algebraic method, and this is called the substitution method. So to solve a system using the substitution method, you want to start by choosing one of the equations. It doesn't matter which equation you choose, the first equation or the second equation and you solve that equation for one of the variables. So you can either solve for x or you can solve for y. Again, it doesn't matter which one you choose, but solve one of the variables in terms of the other variable. So you'll have x equals in terms of y or y equals in terms of x. So let's go through the steps on how to use the substitution method. Solve either of the equations for one of the variables. So that's the first choice you need to make, is choose the equation you want to solve, and which variable you want to solve for is the other choice. Now, sometimes the equation may already be x equals or y equals already. If that's the case, then you can skip step number one. Step number two, you take your answer after you have the equation solved for x or solved for y, and you substitute, that's where the substitution method gets its name, you substitute the expression into the other equation. So if you chose the first equation, then you plug your answer into the second equation, or vice versa. Why the method works on how to solve a system of linear equations is that after you make this substitution, you'll have just one equation with just a single variable left. You'll either have x's or you'll have just y's. So solve the equation for the variable, and then you'll have half the answer. You'll have x equals the value, or you'll have y equals a value. Keep in mind, the solution is an ordered pair. It needs to be x equals and a y equals. So now step four is to back substitute that means you take the answer from your step three, your x value or your y value, and you substitute into one of the original equations. Simplify to find out the value of the other variable that you haven't found yet. So then after step four, 
you'll have your x value and your y value. That is the solution. But then you can always check your answer with the equations that were given in the problem, just like we were doing in the first example. So let's try out the substitution method in example three. Solve the following systems of linear equations using the substitution method. So number one, x plus y equals six. And the second equation is y equals two x plus one. And we are going to use the substitution method. Now you could use the graphical method, but we're going to use the algebraic method this time. So let's go through the steps. Step one, choose an equation that you want to solve and choose the variable you want to solve for. Well, notice that the second equation is already solved for y. So the first steps are even done for us. The second step, substitute y equals 2x plus 1 into the other equation. For the y value, because we're replacing the y, in parentheses. So whenever you substitute in, make sure it goes in parentheses. So the first equation was x plus y equals 6. Replace the y in parentheses with 2x plus 1 from the second equation. So x plus 2x plus 1 equals 6. Notice that now we have an equation with just x. So now solve the resulting equation for the variable x. So the equation we had was x plus 2x plus 1 equals 6. Collect your like terms, you have 3x plus 1 equals 6. And then if you solve for x, you'll have 3x equals 5, and then divide both sides by 3, so x equals 5 thirds. Keep your answer as a fraction. Now we finish the third step. So the fourth step says back substitute x equals 5 thirds into the equation. Now keep in mind that you can substitute in into either of the original equations, but the second equation was already solve for the y value. So y equals 2x plus 1. This is an equation that would be much more sense to substitute in x equals 5 thirds to find the y coordinate. So let's find out the y coordinate. y equals 2 times x, but that's 5 thirds, plus 1. So this is 10 thirds plus 1, or 13 divided by 3. And that's your y value of the intersection point. So now we have the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So the intersection point of these two lines would be x coordinate 5 thirds, y coordinate 13 thirds. So then that's the solution to the system of equations. And then the last step, you can always check your answer by substituting in the x value and the y value into the original equations, and they should be true. All right, let's try number two. This time, x equals 3y subtract 7, and the other equation is y equals x divided by 2 subtract a half. And again, we're going to use the substitution method. So notice that the first equation has already been solved for x. The second equation has already been solved for y. So the first step of the substitution method is already finished for us again. 
but notice that, that the second equation has fractions. Let's multiply the second equation by the least common denominator to remove all the denominators or all the fractions. So multiply by the LCD, which is 2, to each term in the equation. To remove denominators. So if we do that, we'll have 2 times y equals 2 times x divided by 2 minus 2 times a half. Well, 2 times y, 2 times x divided by 2 is just x, so it equals x. And 2 divided by 2 again gives you subtract 1. Notice that the x and the y are on opposite sides of the equal sign. So move the x to the left side to be with the y term. So negative x plus 2y equals negative 1. So that was the second equation. So now the system of linear equations we have is x equals 3y minus 7 and negative x plus 2y equals negative 1. So this is our system of equations. We have the first step already finished. So now substitute x equals 3y subtract 7, because it's already been solved for x, into the other equation. Negative x plus 2y equals negative 1, in parentheses. So if we do that, we'll have negative x plus 2 times y equals negative 1. Take the x and replace it with 3y minus 7 in parentheses. And you can see why it's so important to put parentheses. There's a negative sign in front of the parentheses now. Plus 2y equals negative 1. So this negative sign distributes to change both signs. Negative 3y plus 7 plus 2y equals negative 1. Now we can solve for y because there's only one variable remaining. So collect your like terms. Negative y plus 7 equals negative 1. Negative y equals negative 8. And that means y must be equal to 8, positive 8. That was after you solved for y. So notice that this is only half the answer because we still need to find the x-coordinate. So let's go to the next step, which is to back substitute y equals 8 into the equation x equals 3y subtract 7 to find the x-coordinate. So if we do that, we'll have x equals 3y minus 7. That is x equals 3 times 8 minus 7, because the x value can be found by taking the y value and replacing it with an 8. 24 subtract 7, or 17. So the x value is 17, and the y value must be 8. So that is the intersection point of the two lines or our solution, 17 for the x, and y is 8. All right, let's try out one more problem involving the substitution method. Number 3 is negative 2x plus 4y equals 5. And the second equation is x subtract 3y equals 6. And using the substitution method. So now notice this time that none of the equations, neither one, has been solved for a variable, not like the last two problems. So this time we have to 
choose either equation. Notice that the second equation might be easier to solve because it's already 1x. So choose the second equation. And we will solve for x. Okay, but keep in mind you could take the first equation or the second equation and solve for either variable. It doesn't matter which one you choose. So let's take the second equation and get x by itself. So if you want to solve for x, add 3y. So x equals 3y plus 6. So now we're back to where we were for the last couple problems. Substitute x equals 3y plus 6 into the equation. Negative 2x plus 4y equals 5, the other equation that we did not choose originally. And you always substitute in parentheses. All right, let's see what we come up with. Negative 2x plus 4y equals 5. That becomes negative 2 times x. That goes in parentheses. 3y plus 6 plus 4y equals 5. Notice that the equation only has y's now. That's good. So distribute to remove the parentheses. Negative 6y subtract 12 plus 4y equals 5. And now solve for y. Collect your like terms. Negative 2y subtract 12 equals 5. And then add 12 to get 17. And then divide by negative 2. y equals 17 divided by negative 2. So the y coordinate is negative 17 divided by negative 2. Keep it as a fraction. And now the last step, back substitute to find out the x-coordinate. So back substitute, y equals 17 divided by negative 2 into the equation that we have x solved for. And we had x is equal to 3y plus 6 to find the x coordinate. So x equals 3 times negative 17 divided by 2 plus 6. That would be negative 51 divided by 2 plus 6. And that turns out to be negative 39 divided by 2. So we found out the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate now. So that is the intersection point of the two lines. The x-coordinate, negative 39 divided by 2. The y-coordinate, negative 17 divided by 2. So this is the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate that both lines will intersect at. And this is the solution to the system of linear equations. So this is the substitution method. This is an algebraic method where you can find the solution to a system of linear equations. So this is a good place to stop because in the next video we'll talk about the elimination method. So if you have any questions about any of the examples that we talked about in this video involving the graphical method or the substitution method, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video.